I am uh, Mark Solomon. I am uh, the uh, mother of Chris Mason. <laughs> I am gay mom, at least. I'm also uh, marriage director for Quality California, and we are on Santa Monica Boulevard in the heart of West Hollywood at 11.15 on uh, July the 3rd, 2009, the eve before uh, the 4th of July. And what's going on here? Like, what's... Well, this is one of the great party streets, uh, gay party streets in the country, Santa Monica Boulevard. There are people out. They are happy that it's uh, Friday. It's a long weekend. It's a holiday weekend. It's the summertime. It's uh, this is gay LA, right in the heart of it. That's awesome. So, um, tell me about what you do at Equality California. So, I, my job um, is to figure out how to overturn Proposition 8. So, it's to um, figure out how to restore the right of gay and lesbian couples to marry here. And I've been out here for three months, um, exactly three months, uh, from moved from Massachusetts, and um, I love it here, and I'm excited about what we're, uh, what we're, what we're, what we're doing. And what are you doing in Massachusetts? Well, I headed up Mass Equality, which is the statewide LGBT organization, and we work to, you know, we led the effort to protect uh, marriage in Massachusetts, uh, the right of same-sex couples to marry, and um, we, after that, we took on other, the other New England states, and we worked in Connecticut and Vermont, and uh, things have gone well, and uh, I was lucky enough to come out to California, well, I came out to California the last two weeks of the No On Aid campaign, and I just remember, like, seeing the, um, in San Francisco, I was based at headquarters, after we lost, I remember seeing the um, rainbow flag in the Castro at half mass, and I was like, you know, um, I, I really feel a sense of, you know, obligation or desire to come back and try to lift this uh, cloud off of our heads, so came back out here, and here we are. So, um, well, what's the plan for California? Well, the plan for California, in a lot of ways, is similar to Massachusetts. Um, it's premised around telling our stories, talking about who we are, talking about why we want to be able to marry, um, going door to door, um, which Chris Mason knows very well, um, talking to voters about why, you know, and, and doing it very locally. So we're hiring field organizers around the states um, and uh, in parts of the state where we didn't do very well, and we're you know, it's sort of building local field organizations to to talk to voters. I mean, here it's different in a few ways. Number one, the state is gargantuan. And uh, secondly, um, we have to convince not not just the legislature, we have to convince the, uh, the people of, Mass of, of California. But uh, but the, the methods are very similar. It's um, talking about who we are, telling our stories, and doing it before. And um, do you think that we will win full, or do you think that we will win marriage equality in California? There's no question in my mind that we will win marriage equality. It's more when will we win marriage equality. Uh, but I think, you know, it's, there's no question in my mind that in the next uh, you know, three to four years we will have full marriage equality in California. And uh, I think, you know, we are the tipping point for the country in California, that if we win here, um, if we win by referendum here, I think that we will uh, be beyond, um, you know, I think the other states will, will follow after us and, um, you know, we'll be uh, well on our way. Uh, in a lot of the parts of the country that we went to, you know, people are, marriage is just one of the things they're working on. They're also working on employment, non-discrimination, and hate crimes. Um, do you think that the rest of the country will be, will be able to catch up to Massachusetts and California? Um, uh, do you think that there will be full equality for people in, in the whole rest of the country? I do think there will be full equality. I think that, look, this is the way this country works. We are uh, a country that was premised on federalism, where states uh, do things on their own. And um, I think it does, you know, it's not surprising that states like Massachusetts and Vermont and Connecticut and now Maine, uh, and I think New York and New Jersey soon, and soon California and Oregon and Washington will be the earliest states to have full marriage equality. They are states that passed employment non-discrimination and passed um, 
you know, other laws protecting the transgender community and others in our, you know, in the LGBT community, and then other states will follow. That's um, sort of how this country has worked across civil, you know, many civil rights battles. Um, Massachusetts was one of the early states to abolish slavery in the, you know, in the early 1800s. So, uh, so it doesn't surprise me that it's going this way. I think it's just uh, the way our country works, and I think it's it's good because if we have to wait for the for a majority of the country to be okay with marriage, it could be a really long time. Um, so I think there's a this is good. Um, how do we as queer people win our fight? I think we as queer people win our fight by talking about who we are. It's not something that you can force people to support. Um, although I think there is a role for rallies and demonstrations, but I really think ultimately it's, you know, going to a rally or a demonstration can be a lot of fun. Uh, having a tough conversation with your aunts before Thanksgiving or your great aunt or your brother or sister, that's hard work. That's not always so fun. And that's how we are going to win. It's, it's engaging our family members, engaging our friends, asking our parents to engage their friends and family members, um, and having the difficult conversations. Um, and learning that they're not as difficult as we thought. Those conversations are the things that move people in a snap of the fingers. They'll move someone from being against us to be, you know, my nephew talked to me about this over Thanksgiving. We talked for 15 minutes. I know how important it is to him or her. Um, and, you know, so I'm going to vote for marriage equality. I think it's as simple as that. That's the most persuasive way of, uh, way of being. So that's what we need to do. It's not going to be through... You know, it's something like this. It's not going to be through sort of lying down in the streets. Um, you know, it's different from the from the from the AIDS, uh, you know, HIV AIDS efforts. This is uh, persuading people, talking about who we are, talking about our common humanity. That's what uh, moves people our way. A uh, question I ask everybody is, who is your hero or your role model? You know, I think I have two heroes and role models. One. Uh, is a uh, South African freedom fighter named uh, Steve Biko, and he wrote a lot about uh, sort of black empowerment and the liberation of black people and the spirit of black people and how uh, the transformation of sort of people who were basically slaves in South Africa to rediscovering their humanity. And, um, you know, he said, the greatest weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And, um, so I think that, and I think that applies very consistently for queer people, that um, it's our own, you know, it's, if we are able to liberate our own minds, our own spirits, um, that's what, you know, the rest will come sort of naturally, the rest will flow. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's a little bit trite to say these days, but Harvey Milk is my other future. But I loved Harvey Milk before he was cool. Um, <laughs> and was a big student of his. And um, I think the power of coming out, the power of talking about who we are, talking about who we are as queer people, um, and you know, just being proud and being vocal about it. And then also just seeing a mission beyond ourselves. I mean, Harvey Milton talked about the need to give younger people hope um, for a better tomorrow. And I think that that's a big part of what this movement is all about. It's about giving people, giving people hope. Uh, hope that there is a better tomorrow. I mean, that's one of the things that keeps me fighting even when things are tough, is that you know there are young people who are looking for a better life for themselves, and uh, that's uh, you know that's a, a great uh, you know, a great inspiration. Mm -hmm. So those are two of my heroes.